Hello there, neighborinos. Got a few decent stories for today. First one is all about the popularity of the Oculus Quest. Next one is about another new way that you can play your PC games on your Quest. And then third is about a semi-new system that HTC has, has launched in the United States. Fourth, I've got a few rumors that are likely to be announced at E3. And finally, I've got some announcements that are definitely going to be released. So let's get into it. First off, I said I would talk about the popularity of the Oculus Quest. Right now, at the time of recording this video, it is sitting at place number 54 on the Amazon bestsellers ranking list. And for those of you that don't understand that list, Think of it this way, Spider-Man, God of War, The Quest, and every other system, console, game, and I guess digital code that you could buy for video games is running in a race. And The Quest is currently in 54th place. Just in case you're curious, let me run through what a few of the top 10 are. Number one. Is sitting is currently the 12-month membership for PlayStation Plus. The first actual game is Marvel Spider-Man at rank number four. The first Xbox product is a $10 wallet card. And the first console is the PlayStation Classic at rank number seven. So that being said. The Quest is doing phenomenally well. At this point, it's currently projected that it's going to hit 435,000 units sold within the first three months. And that source is going to be in the description down below as well as the Amazon listing for the Quest. Just in case you haven't already gotten one for yourself. So next up, I do need to talk about the extra way that you can play the, your Steam games on your Quest. Right now, there's an emulator for the Quest called Virtual Desktop that's going to run you about $20. And at this point, well, up until this point, it was possible to pair an Xbox controller or other Bluetooth stuff and use it in Virtual Desktop. And all of that was also available on the Oculus Go version of it. But because not everybody has the, those other controllers, the developers took the time to add the option for using touch controllers as your gamepad. Doing so would split the controller in half and make them function as a virtual Xbox controller for the PC. All of that is done within VR and it only takes a short amount of time. It, you don't have to install any kind of drivers or any kind of hardware, software, anything like that. So it, it just separates all of those settings into a new input tab so that you can easily see and change all those controls as well as set up your gamepad mode. And because it's split in half, you all of those movements are going to be, well, split between those controllers. But because there's no because there's no D-pad or start button, the developer is working on exploring fixes for those. Some kind of a, a backdoor, if you will. But I will try to keep those keep you updated on that as things progress and hopefully we can get even more fixes and additions and possibilities as time rolls on. So the next piece of semi new hardware that HTC has taken the time to release just for us and tell us how special we are is the Vive Pro I. Up until this point I believe it's been available in Europe and Asia but 
just a couple days ago it was made available in the United States. But as you can clearly see by the $1,600 price tag, it is more meant for the enterprise market. So medicine, design, aerospace, that kind of thing. But what good is it? The primary difference between this and the Vive Pro is that, well, not only does this cost $200 more, but it has eye tracking. Yay! And that would be cool and everything if we actually had software that supported that. But up until this point, we don't. Largely because there not only is there not a whole lot of other hardware that supports that, but there isn't really much of a need for that right now. As right now, up until this point, the core VR market, gaming market at least, is fine with, well, not, not really mediocre graphics, but not realistic, I guess. The hardcore gaming market, however, is more intent on absolutely realistic graphics, best you can find, but VR, we're, we're deal, we're, I don't know about you, but I'm happy just being able to see the screen. And as long as I can see the screen, I can fight! And, you know, maybe lose in a good, in a good clean fight and creep, but that's beside the point. Point here is that this thing is useless to us as consumers, but it is still going to be good for us to keep an eye on as the months progress. So next up, I do have to talk about a little bit of E3 rumors and a few games that we may be able to expect to see, even if they may not actually be there. Some of these are in fact confirmed in some respect. One of those is Watch Dogs 3 Legion. It's been in development for a little while now and it's set to release later this year. So it stands to reason that there is going to be a little bit more gameplay footage scheduled to show up at E3. Then on top of that it's possible that the Simpsons is going to be releasing another game, but even if that may be a just a regular panel or or an actual game to be released is another story entirely. And then there's one by the name of Roller Champions. It's similar to Rocket League and that it's going to be a derby themed multiplayer sports game by Ubisoft. As far as the credibility of those leaks go, well, yeah, as far as the credibility of those rumors go, those leaks suggest that it, it may hold water. However, as with most of these, well, some of these, just take them with a grain of salt. And there's, there is likely to be a Capcom game, whether it's Resident Evil 8, which has said to be in the works, Resident Evil 3 Remake, or maybe even another Dino Crisis game. All of these are, I guess, realistic, however, like with like I said, don't get your hopes up and take these with a grain of salt. I'm not going to promise anything because I I don't have that kind of information. Another maybe would be a perfect dark reboot. That one w may show up during Microsoft's E3 press conference. And it would be welcomed by fans in some 
in some respect. Let's see, Fable 4. The George R. R. Martin and From Software collaboration to be called Great Room. And if there's anything we can see, it is that data mined game files from Sekiro say that Great Room may actually be very possible. And finally, this one actually does hold water, and that is a Destroy All Humans reboot. It's been a while since there was an entry in that franchise, but THQ Nordic does show that they want to that they want to see a little bit more of that tiny blue alien. Do you feel like playing as a ninja, but Sekiro didn't quite do it for you, and neither did Neo? Well then, guess what? There is a VR game for you. This one goes by the name of Sirento, and it's going to be available for pre-order on the 30th of July. The only VR game where you can do front flips, back flips, multiple jumps, side flips, wall runs, power slides, cut through your enemies with flashing them accuracy. And of course, you play in futuristic, reimagined Japan, trying to deal with nano-infected cells and cut down lots of people. So it comes in four different flavors. There's going to be a single player mode, single or multiplayer challenge modes, as well as playing through all of your new abilities, some of which even old-timey ninjas didn't have, like being able to slow down time. And of course, you know, leaping 15 feet in the air and stuff. I, I don't think I don't think classic ninjas can do that. And then on top of that, there's going to be all kinds of weapons and stuff that you can play with. So, like I said, available on July 30th, 40 bucks, rated M, and you can find it for pre-order at Best Buy, Bet yeah, Amazon, Best Buy, GameStop, and Target. You can find this link that I'm reading from in the description down below. So do check it out if it's so I really wish I had some fancy little speech to give you about this next game but that's not really the case because there's already a couple different magic casters out there you can find whether they be for the for PC VR or the PlayStation VR and let, let's just say this one does try its best to set itself apart and one of those ways is to use movement for spell casting rather than some button in order to cast those spells. So in order to cast like I, I don't know some levitation spell you'll actually swish and flick. <laughs> this one also has a few different motion options. Not only are you going to have the classic teleportation and free movement but like Sirento it's going to allow for use of the 3D rudder, the full motion controller that was released for the PlayStation VR back in, well, it was announced back in March, but pre-orders, oh wow, pre-orders just shipped a few days ago. Yeah, pre-orders just shipped for the move rudders a couple days ago I think but I went over those back in March if you're a little questioning about those just you know search 3d rudder on Google or whatever it is and just keep in mind that the Wizards enhanced edition will be coming to PlayStation VR on the 6th of August for $30 with a T for teen rating this last story of the night is all about a game that just released a couple days ago, Swords of Gargantua. Do you feel like playing Shadow of the Colossus by yourself or with buddies in virtual reality? Well, look no further. This game will allow you to do, to do just that. You can play by yourself or with your friends, or you can fight giant monsters or 
rock golems or whatever it is there are in there and on top of that you can play on your quest on your rift on your vibe or on your windows mixed reality headset and you just might be able to play with one of any of those headsets on your teammates heads as well so you could be playing on your quest and they could be playing on their rift or their vibe and you'll still be able to play because it is cross platform if you didn't already gather that so have fun get it for me it is twenty dollars on steam not sure when it's going to be released for playstation vr or if it will be but here's hoping and I believe that's a good place to end this video. If you guys are still here, don't forget to check out my next video when I'll be starting out with a few Oculus specific expectations we may be able to get from E3. If you liked it, let me know. If you hated it, let me know. And as always, don't forget to tell me how I'm such a horrible human being for giving you all this news. Ta-ta for now.